still slighted. Sky lanterns released. The Lord is kind and merciful. Prayers offered. A year after the strongest typhoon ever recorded in history slammed the Philippines, the people remembered their dead and celebrated the living. On November 8, 2013, the typhoon, locally known as Yolanda, wreaked havoc in eastern, central, and western Visayas. Hardest hit were the provinces of Eastern Samar, Capiz, Iloilo, and Leyte, affecting more than 14 million people. Over 6,000 people died, and 4 million were left homeless. Haiyan's giant storm surges and powerful winds demolished virtually everything along its path, including hospitals, clinics, and health centers. UNFPA, or the United Nations Population Fund, took the lead in safeguarding the reproductive health and protection needs of women and girls affected by Haiyan. The minute after the destruction has happened, there are already women giving birth, but they have no place to give birth. So they might have to give birth in the side of the road or anywhere else. One of these women was Emily Sagalis. Three days after Haiyan, she gave birth in the ruins of the Tacloban Airport amid the debris left by the typhoon. Of the population affected by Haiyan, 3.5 million were women of childbearing age. Around 270,000 were pregnant, and 180,000 women had just given birth in the six months prior to the typhoon. To ensure access to facilities for safe and clean deliveries, UNFPA set up emergency maternity units. The EMUs were modular hospitals built from containers and can accommodate normal and cesarean section deliveries. Malinis, kompleto sila sa mga facilities. Para talagang private room, nandun na lahat. Kahit anong surgery, nandun na lahat. Hindi ko alam na mayroon pala na lang natutulong sa amin. Vivian Aplaca was the first mother who delivered by C-section at the EMU in Palo, Leyte. Sabi na, doon ka nalang mga anak sa San Jose. Mga parang tent na yun. Gusto ko, sabi ko, normal na lang sana dito na sa bahay. Kasi wala talagang hospital na nag-operate. The second EMU was installed in Balangiga, Eastern Samar, where the town's main hospital, the Albino M. Duran Memorial Hospital, was totally destroyed. The Department of Health said Haiyan destroyed more than 400 health facilities in the region. One of them was the Palo Maternity House. It is one of the 19 birthing centers reconstructed and rehabilitated through the support of UNFPA and the government of Japan. Kung titingnan natin yung situation namin ngayon, mas maganda ngayon as compared before. Dati, weighing scale. Yung height scale, naghihiraman. Ngayon hindi na kasi lahat ng barangay may kanya-kanya. Yung BP apparatus, dati, hihiram ka. Ngayon lahat ng midwives, lahat ng BHWs, may kit sila. During the acute phase of the crisis, UNFPA equipped local health facilities with reproductive health kits, ranging from medical equipment and supplies to medicines. Reproductive health medical missions were conducted to provide pre- and postnatal care services to pregnant and lactating women and their babies. Women who went to the medical missions received dignity kits for personal hygiene. May towel, may mga malong, may sabon, may toothpaste, yung basic hygiene, may orinola nga doon. Nakatulong yun, lalo na sa mga babae, may mga sanitary pads doon, kulang sa tubig. So wala kang mapupuntahan, wala, hindi ka makakabili. Mothers who are in their last trimester of pregnancy received clean delivery kits, which a birth attendant can use when assisting a delivery outside of a health facility. Each kit contains soap, plastic sheet, razor, and string for tying the umbilical cord. In the course of the high-end response, UNFPA and its partners conducted more than 200 reproductive health medical missions. 
During the missions, women were educated on reproductive health through information sessions that tackled topics such as signs and symptoms of pregnancy complications, family planning, sexually transmitted infections, and adolescent reproductive health. UNFPA established meaningful engagement with the youth affected by Haiyan. As volunteers for the humanitarian response, the young people were trained to facilitate health information sessions and to conduct peer education sessions. Around 20,000 young people were able to participate in various activities held at the youth-friendly spaces. Disasters often trigger a breakdown in social structures, in safety nets, and in law and order. These are situations that give rise to cases of abuse, rape, even trafficking in women and children. Social Welfare Assistant Secretary Vilma Cabrera says women and children are often the most vulnerable in disaster situations. In the case of Haiyan, women account for more than 50% of the displaced. Various forms of sexual violence are not unheard of in evacuation centers. That's the most common. When women go to the toilet, we have cases of men acting as like drunk and they pretend to be drunk uh, so that they can go to the CR of women. And even inside evacuation centers, some husbands do inflict physical violence on other uh, wives and some of, of their children. Human trafficking also posed a threat to women and children. Five months after Haiyan, a female police officer from Tacloban City played a key role in rescuing five children from suspected traffickers. She was trained by UNFPA on Violence Against Women and Children, or VAW-C. Mga minor ito sila, mga 12, 10, 14, 15. Yung iba nag-stop ng, stop na ng pag-aaral. In-interview namin yung mga bata. Bakit kayo sumama sa kanila? Sabi ng mga bata kasi nag-promise daw na papaaralin sila doon. After ng pagpaaral sa kanila, bibigyan sila ng magandang trabaho. Titrip din sila sa ibang bansa. In partnership with the Department of Social Welfare and Development, women-friendly spaces were set up to provide women immediate access to services, such as psychosocial support, medical missions, and information sessions. Through the WFS, VAW-C survivors are immediately referred to agencies that can provide medical care and police protection. Isa siyang lugar para sa mga kababaihang kung saan mapipil nila na they are safe, kung may mga problema sa kanilang bahay related to violence, may mapupuntahan sila na pwede nilang bigyan ng information kung saan sila pupunta para matulungan sila sa kanilang problema. Jade Paredes is among hundreds of women who have been empowered in the WFS. She was also trained to protect other women and children. Only Jade never knew it would hit too close to home. As a women's GBV watch group volunteer, seeing her daughter suffer outraged her. Ten days na kapapanganak niya lang, nag-text siya akin hating gabi, hambal sa akin. Maui ako dyan, sinaktan ako. When Jade was able to bring her daughter Johanna to the WFS, her volunteer colleagues spoke to her to explain her rights. For Jade's daughter, learning from a cluster of women who are fully aware of their rights empowered her. She was able to muster the strength to begin rebuilding her and her son's life. At the WFS, women were also equipped with livelihood skills. Minsan po, nang gumagawa kami, kita nyo naman yung mga shell crap. Iniipon yun namin at saka ginagawa, binibinta yun. To ensure that services to protect women and children continue after Haiyan, UNFPA supported the rehabilitation of damaged women's crisis centers. Itong shelter in connection with the people at the barangay or at the evacuation center, nagawang temporary home sa kanila, lalo na yung mga babae na may problema dun sa evacuation center. The healing and rebuilding in areas ravaged by Haiyan continue to this day. Much still needs to be done, but hope is in the air. The principle that we all espoused 
in the rehabilitation effort was Build Back Better. Nandun na kami sa stage na Build Back Better na most of the facilities are really better than it was before. Through the support of partners, efforts to restore reproductive health and protection services for women and children in this region have started to bear fruit. Beck says the close coordination between international agencies and local partners was necessary to capacitate those on the ground and ensure sustainability of the efforts. We are not only responding to the immediate disaster, and doing life-saving interventions, we are also trying to see how can we leave the localities better off once the response is over than hopefully than it was before. Haiyan has become an opportunity for the triumph of the human spirit. Sobrang malaking malaking otang nalug ko sa jan sa nag nagpanak sa akin. Sa laki naman si Sarian, kasi ibinta ko pa yung mula at ng babul ko niya pa ba kano? Pasalamat kami magkasawa. Malaking tulong nun sa akin. Yan ang women. Kung dati ang lungkot ng mga mukha, after being able to learn such things in the modules that we have learned, parang nagkakaroon ng ngiti sa labi at nagkakaroon sila ng pag-asa. Yes, we are going to do this because nobody will do this for me but me. UNFPA, addressing the reproductive health and protection needs of women and girls, even in emergencies.